All right, welcome back. Um, today, we're gonna be tying up the woolly booger. Um, one of the, probably one of the most standard flies that there is out there. Um, I think you'll find it in just about everybody's fly box. It can, it can represent nymphs. It can, it's a great streamer pattern. It can be used as a sculpin, um, as bait fish. Uh, literally, it can, it can represent just about, just about anything that you needed to. Um, and it's quite simple to tie, so it's a it's a great one to start with. I'm tying this one on a uh, on a size eight uh, 1750 Daiichi, which is a, it's a great great hook. I use it for a lot of my streamer patterns. Um, this is a 4x long hook, so it's uh, I like the length of it. And I always try to start um, my woolly boogers with adding some weight. So this is uh, this is point. 025 lead free wire and we're just going to make you know 10 or 15 wraps of that to give to give the fly a little bit more weight i don't know why but i always err on the side of it being too heavy than not heavy enough that's probably about right and we're tying this, although this fly is going to be kind of olive, mostly olive in color. Um, I'm using black UTC 140 um, tying thread just because I like at the end of the fly to have uh, to have a little black head on it. It, gives, it kind of contrasts well with the color of the body. So we'll start with our thread just behind the lead wire. And then we're going to make a few wraps over the lead wire to secure it down. We want to leave, make sure you don't put the lead wire too close to the eye of the hook. Otherwise it causes problems when you're getting ready to, uh, getting ready to finish the fly off. And we'll take it to the, take our thread to the back of the hook. Uh, the tail, uh, we use marabou, marabou plume for the tail. And I'm, as I said, I'm doing this one in olive. So I've got a, a decent piece of marabou and we want the length of the tail to be roughly the same length as the hook so right about there we'll tie that in and we want to tie this down basically up to the same point as the end of where our uh, lead wire is so i'm going to move the thread up right behind there i tie that down and we can trim off our our marabou and what that does is it just kind of gives the gives the body a relatively uniform thickness so when we tie down the when we create the body with the chenille it'll um should be just about right okay um we'll add a little flash to the tail uh, and for this i'm using uh, just a few strands of flashaboo i've got three and we want to have uh, some of it on both sides of the tail. So I'm going to take these three strands, I'll tie it in on, uh, on one side, on the kind of back side, what you can see. And we tie it forward. And we're not going to cut it off because we're actually going to pull it over to the back side. And tie it back. And that should secure in our tail and it'll give us three pieces on both sides. I want that to be just a little bit longer than the length of the length of the tail. Okay, uh, we'll tie in our rib. What's going to act as our rib next, which I'm using uh, fine silver wire and we'll tie, tie that in. And then we are ready to tie in our uh, chenille. So there's thousands, literally thousands of different types of chenille that you can use for these. Um, there's the traditional, uh, just kind of olive chenille. This one's very, very basic. Um, it's the one I'm gonna end up using. There's, if you wanna get a little bit crazier, there's stuff that's, that's kind of a tiger striped in color. And then uh, I use this quite a bit, especially when I'm trying to tie flies for kind of off color water. Um, this is a crystal chenille, which has, um, doesn't have the same kind of density as the, as the regular chenille does, but it's, it's got a lot of flash and a lot of sparkle to it. So it's, it's good for specific occasions. But like I said, for this one, we're just gonna use the regular 
old fashioned, uh, this is medium chenille. And when we tie it in, uh, if you tie it in the way it is right now, you're gonna end up with a big kind of bump at the back of the fly and it just doesn't have a great streamlined look to it. So you can actually pull the fibers, you know, actually pull the fibers off of there and it'll expose the string. Um, and the string is the part that we actually want to tie down and that shouldn't, that shouldn't add any, any more thickness to the fly than what we need. And then we'll take the thread all the way up to just behind the eye of the hook. All right, wrap our chenille, one wrap in front of the previous. Don't want anything that looks too bulky or we don't want to double wrap anywhere. And I'm gonna stop just short of the eye of the hook. When you use these, these flat eye, hooks you got to make sure you leave a little bit of space a little bit of space before the eye of the hook so you can build up a head and you don't cover up the cover up the eye all right um next part is to put our hackle in in this case i'm going to use a i'm actually going to use a grizzly hackle um, i don't know if you can see the full length of this but um, this is about the standard length of a of a hackle that you want to use for a woolly bugger and you can see that it's it's a bit bushier and thicker at the back and then it kind of tapers out to being quite a bit smaller at the at the tip of it so when we tie it in um the front of the you want the the front of the hook kind of the collar of the hook to be the, the bushier part so we're going to pull back sort of right where it goes from being uh kind of furry to a bit more stringy we're going to pull back there we're basically going to use this part of the this part of the hackle. Now, when I tie this in, uh, something that I'll try to do is if you trim the first few fibers, if you trim it down and you just leave just a little bit of the the kind of the ends of the hackle, it's a great way to. Um, give your thread something to kind of latch onto when you tie it, when you tie it down. There we go. And now we're going to wrap this one wrap right behind the, uh, right behind the eye of the hook. And then we're going to work, slowly work our way back till we get just at the back of the hook. And this is where our wire comes in. So we're going to Holding the hackle in my left hand, I'm going to reverse wrap the wire over the top of the hackle to secure it down. And then we're going to work our way up through the fly. And this is not only going to rib the fly, but it's also going to give the hackle something else to, um, to secure it down. And then we'll tie off the wire at the end. A couple good hard wraps for that. You should be able to just spin that and it'll break off. And now we'll pull everything back to create the head. You just want a, a bit of a tapered head at the end. There we go. Trim off the hackle in the back. And put in our whip finish. And the last part would be to add a, just a little bit of head cement to secure everything down. And there we go. Uh, great little fly. Uh, I've got, um, I, I don't even know if there's a, there's a color combination that I don't have. Um, and I don't know if there's a color combination that I haven't caught a fish on. So um, great fly to start with. Lots of um, kind of lots of different steps to it, but nothing that's, that's overly difficult. Uh, so yeah, whip up a whole bunch of these and, um, get out there and get fishing. Good luck. And, uh, thanks for watching.